Pastor Joe Guirco, Redeemer Church of South Hills. I want to thank you so much for checking us out as we continue our series on the five souls of the Protestant Reformation. We come now today to what is known as the material cause of the Reformation because this was at the heart of the Reformation, the central issue, which is justification by faith alone. This is so important that Martin Luther said it's the doctrine by which the church stands or falls. Why? Why would Luther say that? It's because it has to do with how a person is accepted by God, how a sinful person is able to stand in the presence of holy God, to be declared not guilty before the righteous judge of the world. This, right here, is what truly separates Martin Luther and the other reformers from the Roman Catholic Church. Now, the Roman Catholic Church taught and continues to teach that salvation comes through participation in the sacraments. To be accepted into God's presence, a person must be without sin, objectively just, perfectly righteous. It all begins with baptism. The Catechism of the Catholic Church states, and I quote, Holy baptism is the basis of the whole Christian life the gateway to life in the Spirit, and the door which gives access to the other sacraments. Through baptism, we are freed from sin and reborn as sons of God. We become members of Christ and are incorporated into the church and made sharers in her mission. Baptism is the sacrament of regeneration through water and the Word. Unquote. At that moment of baptism, a person is considered to be perfectly just before God, filled with righteousness, the justifying grace of God. It's an illustration. It's not perfect, but I think you'll get the idea of how this works. This is the justifying grace of God. This is the recipient at baptism. At that moment of baptism, that person is filled with the justifying grace of God. At that moment, this person is considered objectively just and righteous before God. And what's the problem? The problem is sin. We sin and we lose some of that justifying grace. We sin some more, lose a little bit more of that justifying grace. Well, how do we get it back? Through the other sacraments. Through penance, get a little more back. Through participating in communion, you get a little more back. And it goes so on and so forth. You sin, you lose that justifying grace. The thing is, when you die, if you're not completely filled with justifying grace of God, you go to a place called purgatory where people pray for you, where masses are said on your behalf until eventually and finally you are filled with God's justifying grace and then enter into heaven at that point. So, while faith is necessary for salvation, it's not sufficient for it. There needs to be more. Things we do while we're alive and things others do for us after we die. So it's faith plus works that equals justification. Now as Martin Luther got back to the scriptures, he discovered for himself and he recovered what had always been there regarding justification. That a person is justified by faith alone. Nothing more needs to be done or can be done by us. Christ did it all. This truth is plainly taught throughout the Bible, but especially in passages such as Romans 3.28, which says this, For we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Or Romans 4.5, And to the one who does not work, but believes in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteous. Or Galatians 2.16, Yet we know that a person is not justified by the works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. So we also have believed in Christ Jesus in order to be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law, because by the works of the law, no one will be justified. And we can go on and on. The thing is that God accepts us as righteous in his sight only because of the righteousness of Christ granted to us by faith as we trust in him. You see, on the cross, Jesus paid for our sin, all of it, taking away the guilt as he satisfied the wrath of God. That's why he could say, it is finished. Amazingly, there's more. Not only did he take our sins upon himself, his righteousness, the merits of his sinless life, his sacrificial death are credited or imputed to us. So what this means is that when the Father looks at you, 
he sees the finished work of Christ applied by the Holy Spirit. We're clothed in the righteousness of Christ, which makes us acceptable to God. Paul puts it this way in 2 Corinthians 5.21, For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This has been called the great exchange. So even when we sin, our cup remains full because of Christ. Because of this, when a believer dies, his soul goes directly into the presence of God, not purgatory or any other place, but with the Lord. That's why Jesus could say to the thief on the cross, today you will be with me in paradise. Westminster Confession Shorter Catechism puts it this way, Justification is an act of God's free grace, whereby he pardons all of our sins and accepts us as righteous in his sight, only for the righteousness of Christ imputed to us and received by faith alone. That's why the Reformers would say that Christians are sino ustus et peccator, at the same time, just and sinner. Now, what are some of the implications for us? I'll just mention a couple. First of all, it means that we're justified by faith alone. Now, we do good works as Christians, not so that we may get into heaven one day, but because we already have a place in heaven. Otherwise, when you do your good works, in a sense, you're doing them for yourself because sooner or later, they're going to get you into heaven. Also, it gives us great assurance on the day that you die, the moment of your death, your soul goes directly into the presence of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for listening. Hope you found this helpful. See you next time as we consider Sola Gratia.